years ago, my wife and I took my very first convention in Houston uh, in the year 2000. George Bush was on the way to becoming the nominee. Uh, at that time, the country was on the red, so things not a little bit happened. And, but a lot of change there has occurred, not just for me personally, but just for all of us in the last 12 years. These conventions are significant. I so appreciate those of you who are here as, as first-timers as I was 12 years ago. I so appreciate you giving up your, your time and, uh, and how difficult it is to break away from the normal routine and the, the obligations of your family and business and being here. But what you do is, is so important. And the momentum that you're yes. here today is going to carry us forward. And let us not forget about this. The big deal is the big deal. And the big deal is November. And this country is on the way for a big change. <laughs> Last July, in my little humble committee of energy and commerce, we had been looking into a, a, an energy policy loan with a company called Surrender. The staff had brought some stuff to my attention that looked pretty inflammatory, to be perfectly honest. And we invited members from the administration to come, the Deputy Secretary of Energy, and uh, someone from the Office of Management Budget, and they were no shows. In fact, I tweeted a picture of the empty desk when we had the hearing. Um, there was someone on the committee that said, well, we'll just continue to try to work with them. And I said, no. We are a duly constituted committee in the United States Congress. We have a constitutional obligation for oversight. These guys are obligated to come when we call. I didn't have a lot of friends when I first brought that up. I introduced the resolution in committee, and uh, of course it passed if there was a Republican voting in favor of it. Well, at the time, that didn't seem like such a big deal, but boy, over the ensuing months, it became more and more apparent that not only was something brought to the state of Denmark, but maybe the whole state. Uh, so a lot has changed. And when you, you know, Congress is doing the appropriations bills right now. I know that's tough to watch. We do an open rule and you can come down and amend any bill with anything that you want. I did not like bill stuff the other night. People are smart enough not to vote against it now. In fact, they allow it to go on a voice vote. But uh, you're very welcome. Almost every amendment to strike federal funding for someone's pet energy project now passes without really much debate and much argument. That is a fundamental change. This is a, 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 a fundamental change of the current United States Congress. Now, three years ago, in the minority, some people went down to the White House, doctors, hospitals, insurance companies, drug companies, the unions, I don't know why they were there. And they went out with the president with that big photo op. We're going to, you know, we all agree we're going to change health care. We found a way to save $2 trillion for their health care system. And so I started asking questions. Who was there? What did they give up? What did they get? $2 million, a lot of money. What are the notes on that? Where's the spreadsheet? Nothing. Uh, the White House photocopied the, uh, their front page of their website and sent it to me. And said, here, be quiet. Well, we were in the minority, and so I didn't have a lot of choice. I filed what's called a resolution of inquiry. I know that's a little bit of inside stuff. But it started the ball rolling. And then when we took the majority, several of the staff members came to me and said, hey, you know that thing you did where you never got an answer? We'd like to look at that a little more. So we kept digging. Now, this time, we didn't lose the people. We called in the people who were down at the White House and said, will you talk to us? And they did. And they talked a lot. And they provided emails. And the story is now coming out. In fact, the New York Times uh, this weekend, believe it or not, which really did a very good in-depth piece on the secret deals down at the White House. Now, why is that important? Because we have a Frankenstein monster of a health care law that is the law of the land right now that the Supreme Court has heard oral arguments and is going to rule before this month is over. And it is a chaotic mess. Almost, there is, regardless of what they do, this mess is going to be with us and going to be re required, we're going to be required to continue to clean it up for literally for years. And it was so unnecessary, but when you peel the enemy back and you look at how these deals were struck, Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers Association. They've done some great things for this country. They bought policy from the White House. 
They bargained on the price. The White House said we need $100 million to keep re $100 billion, I'm sorry, to keep reimportation out of the world. They said we can't afford it. How about 80? They said sold. That's the kind of thing that was going on down in the White House, literally the, the, the money changers in the temple. So I don't know where this will end up. I'm pressing the committee. Look, we may not. But now that we've gotten the information that the White House can't plead executive privilege and it's now it's all in the public domain, you know, they sent an email. Everybody that got the email before you got it is on that email. That's the kind of stuff we got from these companies who came in and said, hey, you have all our documents. And here they are. Nancy and the Carl Brown, the man, Jim Messina, who's now the uh, President Obama's uh, uh, campaign coordinator. They're all there. And Jim Messina had an email and said, what the hell? That wasn't part of our deal. Yeah, how about that? Come in and talk to us about the deal because we want to know. Well, all of this, of course, is backstory leading up to what happens in the Supreme Court. I don't know what's going to happen. I am urging, in fact, I spoke with the speaker yesterday. We have got to be so ready for this because we're going to be pounded over the head once that thing, once that really happens. And we've got to be ready. We've got to be sure we don't legislate in reaction to something that is now in the headlines. That's not the way to do it. So I don't know how that's going to play out. Please watch uh, watch what happens for me on Twitter. And uh, we'll try to keep things up to date. Uh, well, as a commercial for the end, I do have two town calls coming up. One in Denton and one in Flower Mill. Wednesday in Denton, Thursday in Flower Mill, both at 7 p.m. It would be okay with me if some conservatives were at the town hall. Because, <laughs> because you know who else is going to be here. And I don't know, a little bit ironic, it just worked out this way, I didn't plan it, but remember the summer town halls of 2009 when everyone was so upset about the health care law? I'll be doing the dental town hall at the same place, the art center, uh, and I'll be doing the flower mount town hall at the same place at the uh, Church United Methodist Church. Uh, both of those locations seem to work out well in summer 2009. We'll see how they work out now. And again, I know the Democrats will be there. They always are. Uh, it hurt my feelings to see people who, who felt the same way I do there at the same time. But thank you all so much. I hear from you. We have the 11th largest congressional district in the United States right now. It will change with redistricting. Um, I get 100,000 letters a year. I get those because you're involved. I get those because you're concerned. You're concerned about the things you see happening in Washington, you're concerned about the ranks of the country. That is evidenced by the fact that you're here this morning. You do great work. Please keep it up. I need your help. Thanks very much.